Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So last week we put in the code to ask the questions and this week we are going to put in the code so that we the player can answer those questions and choose one of the options that comes up. So we have here the ability to press spacebar to generate new questions. It's always random. So sometimes we do get the same question um, multiple times in a row, but there's no way of choosing which one of these two possible answers we think is correct yet, is there? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start off in our projects. We're going to go to the sprite that we've named answer one. We've got just this code here, which is displaying the possible answers. Now we're going to put in some code to see what happens when we click on that sprite. So we're going to go to events. We're going to drag out when sprite clicked, when this sprite clicked. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to um, broadcast um, um, a new broadcast. So drag out broadcast, click on that white triangle. Yours probably says broadcast display possible answers, but we're going to make a new broadcast. So click on that white triangle, select new message. And we're going to name this answer selected. And that means that we, the player, have clicked on one of the possible answers to our quiz question. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put a wait one seconds. And then we're going to ask a question. Um, and when I say that, uh, what I mean is in code, we're going to check something. We're going to uh, see, have we gotten um, our answer right? Have we selected the correct answer? Um, so to do that, we're going to pull out an if then else. We're going to do that from control, the orange category. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to operators, the green category on the left. And we're going to drag out an equals operator. And we're going to be asking, is the current have question um, when we've selected answer one or answer two, what's the correct answer? So remember that we have um, our real answers list. We have a list of real answers that say if the real answer is one or two. So if we ask the question, what is Spider-Man's real name, Clark Kent or Miles Morales, there is uh, an entry in this list which says the real answer is number two. So what we need to do is we need to check. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, variables. We're going to go down and look at the list code, that really dark orange, and look for item one of uh, a list. Yours might say answer one. Drag that out. So we first need to click on that white triangle and change it to real answers, because we want to know is the real answer one, um, because then that means we have clicked on answer one, which is the real answer. Um, but we don't know which entry in the list we're on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up and look for current question, that little rounded current question variable, drag that out and put it over the one in item one. So now we should have if item current question of real answers equals, then click on that 50 and type in one. Then that's correct because we've selected answer one. Um, so go to events, look for broadcast. Yours might say broadcast answer selected. Drag that out and put it right in that first gap in our if then else. Now click on the white triangle because we're going, get, we're going to make a new broadcast. Click on new message and this broadcast is going to be called correct. And then we're going to drag out another broadcast and put it in the else. Click on that white triangle, new message and call this incorrect. So what this code is going to do 
is it's going to see what question are we currently answering um, and then when I've clicked on my option um, so for example what is the strongest pickaxe in Minecraft if you know Minecraft you'll know that it's diamond not gold so when we click on gold it's going to um, say oh is gold the correct answer and it's going to see that no gold is not the correct answer um, and then it's going to broadcast incorrect now we don't have anything yet to happen with these broadcasts so what we need to do is we need to do um, one more thing we're going to um, pull out a when I receive yours will probably say when I receive answer selected but click on that white triangle and actually that's fine yeah we want to keep it as when I receive answer selected so when you've clicked on the sprite to say oh I think the answer is gold or I think the answer is diamond we want those answers to disappear because you've already selected your answer um, so to make uh, a speech bubble disappear we're going to go to looks the purple category we're going to look for say hello drag that and put it underneath when I receive answer selected click on the hello and delete it so it just says say and then there's literally nothing in there and that will basically remove the speech bubble it's a cute little trick so we've got this code here this code checks to see when you've clicked on the sprite if you're right or if you're wrong and this code when you've selected um, your answer will make the speech bubble go away now the brilliant thing is this code needs to be identical in answer to so you can click on when this sprite clicked drag and then put your mouse right over the sprite in the bottom right window answer to and let go and you'll notice that our code is just where we left it here do the same thing for when I receive answer selected drop that into answer to now let's have a look in the answer to sprite and you will see that all our code has been transferred over I'm just going to move it around a little bit so it's not in each other's way that's perfect there's only one thing we need to change and that's our if then else statement because we need to be checking if the real answer is two okay so now we have um, when we when we select an answer what will happen is the answers will disappear like that so we need our host to respond um, we've sent out these broadcasts we broadcast correct or incorrect depending on which answer we've chosen we need our host to um, re react to that so let's click on the game show host let's look for um, so currently to ans ask questions we hit the space bar so what we need to do is we need to put some codes here to respond to some of these broadcasts um, so let's go to events and let's um, look for when I receive answer selected I'm going to zoom in on this so it's nice and big for you guys to see when I receive answer selected um, go to looks the dark purple ca the purple category and pull out switch costume to and then click on that white triangle we're going to make we're going to switch the costume to talking to and then look for say hello for two seconds that seems fine click on that hello so when you click on one of those sprites the host is going to respond with and you're totally dot 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 and then they're going to say either right or wrong so what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this when I receive answer selected and then normal click on duplicate just put this down here you could make this from scratch if you wanted um, you could sort of just get all the codes again if you wanted but click on this white triangle here and select correct switch the costume uh, to click on that white triangle and select correct and say click on the say and type in right 
I'm going to make it all in capitals with an exclamation mark. And we only need it to happen for one second. OK, perfect. Now all we need is the incorrect version. Right click on when I receive correct. Duplicate that. Pop that down here. Click on the white triangle. Change it to incorrect. Switch the costume to incorrect and say wrong. So with our costumes, now you can see why we've named them the way we have. Uh, the game show host is either going to be all happy or, or all frowny, depending. All right, so let's give this a go. So we hit spacebar to, to bring a new question. What is Spider-Man's real name? Let's click on Miles Morales. Huh! And you're totally right. And you can see the um, game show host is looking all happy. Then if I hit the space bar again, it asks a different, it asks a different question. Uh, let's select the correct, the incorrect answer. Let's say flowy. And you're totally wrong. Okay. Uh, what is Spider-Man's real name? Clark Kent, wrong. Diamond, right. There we go. So we've got our code working now for um, if um, the, um, uh, the, with the with our answers, answering the questions. However, there'll be a little glitch. Let me show you the glitch. You can keep answering the question. And in fact, you can keep clicking it really fast and do it a bunch of times over. Now, for now, this is not a big problem, but when we add in points, this is gonna be a big, big problem. So we are gonna create a variable that controls whether or not the player has control of being able to click on answer one or two. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to control, we're gonna look for if then, and we're going to drag that out and put it. Um, so what we need to do is we need to do this in answer one or answer two. Actually, we're going to do it in both of them. So make sure you're in the sprite answer two. Let's, let's start with answer two. Drag this if then and put it right underneath when this sprite clicked. And then we're going to go to variables, the orange category. We're going to click on make a variable and this variable is going to be called player control. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to operators. We're going to grab out an equals operator. Let me zoom in, zoom in on this so you can see what we're doing. And we're going to put that little six sided shape inside in between the if and the then. So now we should have if we're going to go to back to variables. We're going to drag out player control and put it in that first little gap of our equals operator. So if player control equals yes. And only if the player control variable is yes, is it going to do all this stuff. Otherwise it will do nothing. So the first thing that, so then what we need to do is we need to br bring out a set variable and put it right underneath our if player control equals yes then click on that white triangle we're going to set player control to no so once we click on the answer um that's going to um that's going to take player control away so we can't keep clicking on answers until we're being asked a new question so go back to answer one, and we're gonna do the same thing. You can copy this across if you want. In fact, actually, let's do that. Let's go to answer one. Let's grab this when sprite clicked, whole piece of, piece of code and throw it away. And let's go to answer two, get our new and improved piece of code, drag that and drop it onto answer one. There we go, it's, a, it's arrived in answer one. Let's spread it out a bit and let's click on that. Let's look at that if item current question of real answers equals one, because this is the sprite for answer one. All right, that all seems good. 
The only thing we need to do now is we need to make sure that we give player control back to um, the, the player. So what we need to do is we need to look back to our game show host sprite and look underneath define ask new question. Um, at the very bottom where it's got broadcast display possible answers, we're going to grab a set variable. So make sure you're in variables, the dark orange category. Look for set variable to zero, but change that variable to player control and type in yes. Now, very important that when you type in yes here, it's spelt exactly the same way that it's spelt here if player control equals yes, because if they're not exactly the same, it's not going to work. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that at the beginning of the game, the player doesn't have any control. So we're going to look for when green flag clicked. We're going to grab out set. Uh, um, so underneath when green flag clicked in our game show host sprite, we're going to set player control to no. All right. So at the beginning of the game, the player doesn't have control. And let's test it. So we start the game, play some music, and I try and answer the game's questions, and nothing happens because player control is set to no. And still nothing's happening. But now if I press the space bar to summon a new question, we can see that the player control variable has changed to yes. So we can answer diamond. And now if I'm trying to click, it doesn't work. Now, one thing you might notice is that if you have a question and you answer it and you click a bunch of times on one of these sprites, you can kind of interrupt the next bit of code that's meant to run. Um, and that I think is just a limitation of how Scratch deals with when this sprite clicked. You'll notice that there's something special that happens when you click on um, a when this sprite clicked um, a, a sprite with that code. Can you see there's that the green flag is flickering up in the top left corner? The same thing doesn't happen if we click on the host. So that's that is sort of a, a, a bit of a limitation there. But as far as I'm aware, there's not a, an easy way around that. Um, but the main thing that we wanted to fix was we didn't want players to just answer um, questions. We don't, we don't want the players to make answers if there wasn't an active question, which they can't do, which is really important when we start doing the score, like being able to score points, having a way of winning or losing this game. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing um, in the future. We're going to be um, having a better response for um, when a player is correct or incorrect. Um, we're going to have um, uh, a way of keeping track of how many questions you've gotten right and wrong. And we're gonna have ways of deleting questions so that you don't get asked the same question over and over again in the same quiz. So subscribe to see the next episode, ring the bell, all that typical YouTube stuff. Um, but stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.